Yo, what's going on everybody? I wanted to make a video about the LG C10 OLED and what I find to be the best gaming picture settings to use for this display. I had a couple people ask me to make some picture settings videos and I wanted to start off with gaming as I think that most people are buying this display for the gaming features that it boasts. So as you can see here, we are running Red Dead Redemption 2 on the PS4 Pro, and we are running this in HDR. And first and foremost, I want to apologize for my iPhone 11 Pro Max's camera's limited dynamic range which is really going to struggle and be exposed to pick up all the detail that I'm seeing here in person. What I've noticed is that it likes to crush black levels or rather shadow detail and overexpose highlight details. So what I've done is I have tried to tone down exposure as much as I can to maintain those highlight details without completely crushing the black levels, but as you can see here, while looking at Arthur here on his horse, his jacket is very dim, and that is just not the case in person. Alright, so let's jump into this. The first thing we're going to do is long press, or long press and hold on the gear icon on the LG Magic Remote to bring up the picture options. And the first thing we want to do is head down to additional settings. Under additional settings we want to go to HDMI Ultra HD Deep Color and make sure that that is enabled for the HDMI input your game console is connected to. This is going to allow HDR. Next, we want to go down to Instant Game Response and also make sure that that is enabled. As you can see, I do have this enabled. What this is going to allow is the lowest possible input lag that this display has to offer, which I believe is 13 milliseconds at 4K60. It's a shame that the PS4 Pro does not support FreeSync because if it did, I also would have this enabled. But for some reason, PlayStation does not like to or want to support FreeSync, which is VRR. PlayStation 4 in general doesn't support VRR at all. The PS5 will support forum VRR, but it will not support FreeSync, whereas the Xbox Series X will support FreeSync, so I hear. And I guess it is not set in stone that the PS5 will not support FreeSync, but from all the rumors I have heard, it will not. Now that's out of the way, I do want to go over the OLED screen saver settings because these are kind of important for gaming where you might have static HUDs and stuff on the screen. Make sure you have your screen shift enabled as well as the logo luminance adjust at least on low. I haven't found out yet if I want to run this in low or high. There is a slight difference between low and high, but so far I've decided to keep it on low. Hopefully that doesn't come to bite me in the ass later on. Alright, so let's go into the picture mode settings, and as you can see I am already in the game picture mode. And under the HDR picture modes we have Vivid, Standard, Cinema Home, Cinema, Game, and filmmaker. We want to just steer clear of all these other modes and just go to game which is also going to allow the lowest input lag possible. If I switch to vivid 
it is going to look very blue and over sharpened but the biggest sin of the vivid standard and cinema home modes for gaming is that they are all using motion interpolation which does not work well for gaming as it increases input lag and it also causes a lot of artifacts when panning or any motion is happening my camera might not be able to pick this up but there is ghosting and artifacts around Arthur here on his horse So we just want to steer clear of all of these modes in general. Cinema and Filmmaker do not use motion interpolation, but I would stick to game as it's going to allow the lowest amount of input lag. Next, let's go over these settings here, like OLED light contrast and brightness, etc. OLED light, we want to be set at 100 for all HDR content. Same goes for contrast. This is crucial to have a proper rendition of HDR. Brightness, I have left at 50 and Pretty much all these settings here are default. What I have found going any lower on the brightness is going to crush black levels and going any higher is going to raise black levels. In the game mode, the 50 default is perfect from what I have tested and experienced. Sharpness, I have left it 10. Color 55, which is default as well. This is subjective. If you're not a picture purist or you don't care about accuracy that much, you can increase this. I doubt you would want to decrease this, but you can increase this for some more color saturation. But I have found it fine at 55. Tint is a global control pushing the display more towards the red or the green hues I don't have any problems with tinting I mean this display is not professionally calibrated but I find it to be suitable right where it is under the advanced controls I do not use dynamic contrast some might choose to use dynamic contrast, but I recommend leaving this off as it will cause brighter scenes to appear brighter and darker scenes to appear darker. Dynamic tone mapping. Now this is a big one. I am running this in HDIG mode, which stands for HDR Gaming Interest Group. We will go over why I'm running this in HDIG mode in a minute, but under these settings you have dynamic tone mapping on, off, or the HDIG. If I switch dynamic tone mapping on, it brightens up the image by a pretty decent margin, which is pretty great for a bright room and is good if the game is looking too dark. But it comes at a cost to specular highlight detail. It will actually clip more highlight detail than, say, the HDIG mode. So we're going to go back to the HDIG, which is similar to off, but there is a difference, I promise you. Now, I am not 100% sure if Red Dead Redemption 2 supports HDIG or not but it is making a difference and we'll go over that quickly soon. Now I'm running out of time here. I'm almost at the 10 minute mark and YouTube is capping me to 15 minutes for some reason. If anybody knows why, please let me know down in the comments section below. I speculate it has to do with me not being monetized. All right, so anyways, super resolution, leave that off. That is edge enhancement at least to my knowledge.
It says make exploring your difficult to see areas more vivid. I have not really found this to even impact this game in particular. Color gamut, leave that on auto. You have wide extended auto, but you want to let the display decide what color space to run the panel in. White balance, now this is basically the only setting that I had to change, which was defaulted to medium, which is very cool and gives a blue hue to everything just like cool does even more. Now a lot of people think that warm color temps look yellow. Well, this is actually false and if you use a warm color temperature for a period of time, going back to anything but, will just look way too blue and cool. Warm 2 is targeting D65 white point, which is what content is mastered at. So if you're not using the Warm 2 setting, I highly suggest you use it or at least use Warm 1. Even if you think it looks yellow, give your eyes some time to adjust. And I almost guarantee you that if you try to go back to cool or medium, it is going to look very blue to you and just look off. So that's it for the advanced controls under picture options i have left basically all of these off in black level at auto in my playstation 4 pros black level is also set to auto you don't need noise reduction for gaming smooth gradation might be useful if you see a lot of banding but it shouldn't really be an issue with quality content like when gaming under the true motion settings this is black frame insertion. This can be used for any non-HDR content which is going to boost motion resolution and make motion appear cleaner and clearer. I do not have an issue with the LG C10's motion handling at all. Coming from a full array local dimming QLED which had a slower pixel response time. This is vastly superior and motion is very clean and clear. This has four settings actually. It has a low, a medium, and a high, and a auto. As you can see, the BFI is being caught by my camera here. But the problem with BFI is it reduces brightness, which is not ideal for HDR. And on the low setting, I believe it is decreasing brightness by 25% and just goes up from there. Alright, so those are basically all the gaming settings that I've changed. Under AI services, you want to pretty much leave all these out. If you want to use AI Sound Mode Pro, you can, but the AI brightness control does not seem to have an effect at all. So the next thing I want to go over here real quick before I run out of time is the HDR settings that I'm using for Red Dead Redemption 2. Under the HDR calibration, I have it on the game HDR style and the peak brightness set at 800 and paper white at 150. Now, my camera is crushing the highly detail big time here and we're going to or not the highlight detail, rather, the shadow detail, and let's just demonstrate how much so. Actually, my camera, its exposure was not picking that up. It's going to re really struggle here, but I can assure you that all that detail is present here inside that barn. We're struggling to pick this up on my camera. But again, I assure you that it is there. So we're running out of time here. I was going to go over some more things and I'll make another video about that. But I want to thank you all for watching. And until next time, peace out.